How's it guys and girls and uh, welcome to my backyard in week 3 of our South African lockdown. As you guys can see it is uh, nice and overcast today and we had some good rain yesterday so this video had to wait until today. So um, as this video's title reads this is going to be a how to video on how to set up Stellar Pro on your mobile device. So you can get the most out of your gun and scope every time you go out to shoot or hunt. So uh, before we get started, you get yourself a pen and paper because there's some notes that you guys need to take. And uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so before we get started with all the practical stuff, there's some stuff that you are basically going to need. Uh, first thing is first, you are going to need a chronograph so we can get the average feet per second of your um, pallet of choice or slug of choice. I'm still using a F1 crony uh, that's a little bit banged up over the years but it's still working um, till today so that's the thing I'm going to use. Next up obviously is your pallets or slugs of choice. I'm going to use um, the 18 grain JSBs um, for this test purposes. Next up you're going to need is a caliper. I strongly recommend using a caliper or if you don't have a caliper you can use a ruler but um, I strongly recommend rather getting a caliper and I'll show you guys in a bit why I say so. So um, after that you are going to need some kind of target that's safe and I have a box here right next to me that's filled um, right to the brim with uh, uh, plastic bags and then I taped it up so uh, it can catch the pallet safely it's cheap, it's safe, it even stops my slugs on high power which gives me around 65 foot pounds so uh, it is going to be safe for uh, the testing that we are wanting to do today and then the most important bit that you need is high protection you don't want to sit with a permanent injury that will keep you out of the sport so stay safe and wear your eye protection when doing any crony work. So with that out of the way let's get to the practical uh, stuff on what you need to do first. Okay so first uh, thing is first we need to uh, zero our gun at a distance of choice. Um, this is personal preference, you can zero your gun to whatever distance you desire. I normally do it at uh, 30 meters, so if you decide on whatever yards or meters you can do so. After that we need to do some crony work, so if you zero your gun you can just as well do the, the crony work um, as well. You can shoot a, a good short string and get your average feet per second with your pallets or slugs of choice. Like I said, I am going to use um, the 18 grain JSBs for this test. So with all the hard work being done now, outdoors doing the, uh, the zeroing and getting your average feet per second, we can move over to the scope now. And um, this is where the interesting part comes in. We need to find the, uh, the height of the scope. So if you don't have a caliper, you can use your uh, ruler. Um, and basically what you can do is you can guess and put it right in the middle of the, the barrel and measure upwards to the middle of the scope, which will give you a rough estimate on the scope height. But when it comes to long range shooting um, and getting your Stellar Pro dialed in correctly, I would strongly recommend a different um, type of method to find out what is the height of your scope. So what I am going to do, this is method number two, and I think the most accurate way of doing it. So uh, let me show you. Okay, so first we need to measure the outer diameter of our scopes. Although the scope might say something else um, spec-wise, uh, the dimensions on the outer uh, side of the uh, scope might be different. For instance, this is a NTC King Cobra F1, 
6 by 24 by 50 which means the objective, le uh, objective lens is a 50 millimeter lens um, but if I measure the outside of the lens it measures 27.5 millimeters now I'm not going to use that value um, and the reason for that is I want to measure the distance between the shroud and the scope as well and my caliper only allows me to do it right here in the front so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna um, measure the scope cap in my case if you don't have a scope cap you can use the outer dimension of your scope um, in, in this uh, example like I said I'm just going to measure the outer dimension of my uh, scope cap which gives me 58.5 millimeters I don't know if you guys can see it there so I'm going to write this down 58.5 millimeters and then I am going to measure the outer dimension of my shroud if you don't have a shroud you can measure your um, your barrel in my case not sure it is 24 millimeters again I'm going to write this down 24 millimeters and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the value that I got for um, the outer dimension of my scope which is uh, uh, 58.5 millimeters we're going to divide it by 2 and that is going to give us 29.25 millimeters so this is the center then of the scope I'm also going to divide the shroud in half which will give me the middle of the barrel which is going to be 24 divided by 2 gives you 12 millimeters and then I am going to measure the distance between the shroud and the scope then. which gives me 12 millimeters so I'm going to write that down we're not going to divide that in half because that distance we are going to use so now what we are going to do is we're going to add up the values that we divided in half of the scope and the shroud plus the distance between the shroud and the scope which is 29.25 plus 12 plus 12 which gives us 53 53.25 uh, millimeters so um, this is how high the scope is now center from the barrel to the center of the scope 53.25 millimeters now depending on what scope mounts you use and what scope you use and obviously what gun you're using yours might be different to me so it's always good to be very specific when it comes to this because um, this will just give you more accurate data at the end of the day so with all that bits and pieces sorted out now we can move over to the phone and uh, add all this information that we got now onto the app and get everything sorted so without further ado let's move over to the phone sorry for the sunglasses but um, the clouds keep on coming in and out so uh, I don't want to sneeze while I'm explaining to you guys what's going on so uh, I suppose you already have the Apple uh, installed on your phone um, I strongly recommend you to get yourself the Stellar Pro version the reason for that is it has more reticles more information that you can use and whatnot so uh, the free version is okay but um, you're only allowed to do some stuff on it it's not really expensive it's really worthwhile because you can always back up your information uh, to Dropbox Google Drive or directly onto your phone so every time you switch your phone um, you have your information available so first things first um, if you open up the app this is probably the main screen that you are going to see and before we add anything we I want to show you guys if you tap on this little gear icon here and scroll to the bottom you'll see measurement units there at the bottom you can click on that and right on the top you see Imperial units or metric uh, units 
you can switch between those two or you can do everything individually um, if you choose to do so so uh, going back um, we're first going to start and add a new rifle you can add multiple rifles with multiple information so you can always just uh, switch between the, the rifles if you do uh, choose to do so so what I'm going to do I'm going to add a new one and I am going to name uh, this one uh, Safari uh, test you can put your guns details in there and then we're going to start with the scope so uh, first of all you see your zero distance in meters you also probably say yards if you're using imperial i'm using metric because all of our units here in uh, south africa are metric so i'm used to metric if you use imperial like i said you can go switch it over so like i said before i actually did my zeroing at 30 meters and uh, my scope height in centimeters uh, was 53.25 uh, millimeters so in centimeters it's going to be 5.325 done now um, it asked me uh, vertical clicks in MOA and or horizontal clicks in MOA now you have to go take a look on your scope on the turret itself what it says on mine uh, the NTC King Cobra it says one click uh, is equivalent to one centimeter at 100 meters so right here at the bottom or in the middle where it says MOA my scope click units I'm gonna go and select you can select between MOA MRAD uh, inches at 100 uh, yards or centimeters at 100 meters like I said my units are centimeters in um, at uh, one uh, centimeter at uh, 100 meters so going back to the vertical clicks um, I have one centimeter at 100 yards or 100 meters excuse me vertical and for my horizontal my elevation and windage both of them are one centimeter at 100 meters then going down we can uh, select our scope reticle um, you can tap there and scroll through all the reticles until you find it or you can do a physical search minus the NTC um, my reticle I know um, in the manual it says it's the SCB2 so um, I can choose whichever one I want because my scope is a first focal plane scope if you are using a second focal plane scope this little checkbox here you're going to, going to leave it unchecked your minimum um, scope magnification in my case it's going to be 6 and my maximum is 24 and in the middle it asks you uh, um, on what magnification your scope is calibrated on most of the times uh, the scopes are second focal, focal plane scopes are calibrated at 10 times mag magnification but just go make sure um, in your scopes manual or whatever on the internet and find out what um, ma magnification your gun is uh, calibrated to, uh, to and what that is for is um, if you put it on 10 times magnification your scope will be a true molded um, scope then but if you are using a first focal plane scope your reticle always grows with the magnification every time you up the the magnification and you know uh, when you lower it the uh, reticle will shrink in my case my scope is a first focal plane scope so I'm gonna check that box so the magnifications and calibration of the magnet uh, of the scope doesn't um, come into play and it's not important anymore so after the scope um, information has been filled in we're gonna click OK oh, sorry that's my screen recorder again and now we are going to head back to the information of the gun 
um, on top you can see change cartridge you can even change your pallets you can fill uh, pallet information or slug information in separately and always go change the, um, the information uh, regarding if you are using say for instance 18 grain uh, pallets or 25 grain pallets or slugs or whatever the case may be so I'm going to fill this in I'm gonna say it's the JSB 18 uh, grain uh, pallets and I don't need to go fill in all this information that the pallet or the bullet length and the diameter and all this what's nice about it if you go down you scroll down all the way you have a little database here of pallets um, I already chose mine on JSB here you have your calibers and your brands obviously you can go choose whichever one you use and I'm going to select the exact heavy 18 grains it's going to ask me load uh, bullet exact heavy 18 grains I'm going to say yes and now you'll see on the top all the information has been filled in the length of the pallet um, diameter and the weight um, and then the ballistic uh, coefficient which is the most important part of this whole thing if you want to get it right um, this database is fairly accurate but there is a video of mine which I will link right on top here that you can go check out on how to calculate your ballistic coefficient if you really wish to do so because what we did find in the past is that um, not all the ballistic coefficients are the same out of different air rifles so uh, you can go check if you really want to like I said the link will be up here the drag function is also very important important we are going to select GA GA is the um, air rifle uh, ballistic coefficient or the drag function uh, excuse me and then underneath that is our uh, velocity so um, I'm going to select mine was 874 feet per second average just going to clear that and then the temperature you can just check on your weather app what the temperature might have been when you zeroed yours I know mine was close to 20 degrees Celsius I'm gonna say okay okay and then at the bottom part the zero weather um, matching current weather thing you don't need to stress about that's not really that important um, I haven't played too much with it so um, all my shorts have been dead on so far um, it's not really I think applicable to the air rifle thing um, we can uh, then head back to uh, click OK then head back to the main screen uh, underneath that we have the, the twist rate in inches now my um, barrel on my gun is a 19 uh, to 1 inch ratio I'm gonna select that and I know it's a right hand twist Depending on what air rifle you use, um, I'm not sure about all the, the barrels out there, so please do not ask me. I don't know. Um, I just recently found out what my gun's twist rate is, so please find out from your, your local dealer or on the internet. I honestly do not know. Um, if you really want to uh, find out what it is, go on to these firms like Gateway to Air Rifles and uh, Air Gun Nation. Uh, those are good places to ask the people what the twist rate might be on your specific air rifle okay so basically that is that when it comes to the scope and the guns information we're going to click on close and the next important part that you have to fill in is the weather now the weather has a massive 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 impact on your point of impact um, especially on longer ranges so temperature, um, you can do this roughly. You know, you can use your weather uh, weather app. My weather app here on top says uh, between 16 and 17 degrees um, Celsius. I'm gonna put it at 20 degrees, more or less. It's not really that cold as of this moment. And then the pressure, the barometric pressure 
is very important if you stay close to the ocean you're gonna get a different reading than what the guys you know more upland will get now my phone allows me to use the internal um, barometric uh, uh, reading um, as you see when I uh, type or uh, selected that little checkbox there um, it automatically filled it in so um, you can calculate the pressure via um, uh, what you call it you can go on to Google and look at the area there and uh, just type in what is the barometric pressure of that specific area and uh, you know fill it in there because it will definitely make a difference when it comes to humidity you can put um, 50 percent in there or whatever the case may be um, what I do is I got myself a very cheap um, anemometer that can give me the temperature and uh, the humidity I'm not really um, worried about the wind speed uh, I know the wind speed on this uh, unit is not going to be uh, very accurate compared to my um, weather flow wind meter so I basically just carry this around and then during the course of the day as I shoot um, say on intervals of an hour or two hours I normally just go check what the humidity is and the, um, the temperature is because the temperature and the humidity also play a big role please bear in mind if you are shooting between say 20 meters or 20 yards out to say 70 yards or so there's not going to be a massive difference when it comes to weather and um, humidity and stuff like that I would say if you go over 100 yards or 100 meters plus you are going to need to dial in this thing spot on to let that pallet go um, where you want it to go and if you don't believe me um, there are so many videos of mine where I had the Daystate Wolverine where I took shots way out over 100 meters and um, it was spot on every single time um, when I pulled the trigger I got most of them are head shots hard and long shots, yes, neck shots, yes, 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 the list yes, just goes yes. on and on so um, I don't want to brag but you can really trust me when it comes to the information that I'm giving you right, right now and I strongly recommend you get a cheap old uh, um, meter like this at the moment it's telling me it is 28 degrees now outside it was lying here in the sun so uh, it is dropping now at the moment it's already at 27.9 uh, degrees and the humidity is at 33% now with the humidity being a bit lower um, there's automatically um, less friction in the air because of there's less moisture in the air when the humidity goes up there's more moisture in the air which will put a little bit more drag onto your or, uh, palate which will cause it to go down much quicker it's very technical and I don't want to get too technical in this video um, if you guys want more information regarding that I'll make a separate video for that I want to I don't want to make this video too long so basically after we fill that in we can go put in our desired um, range I'm gonna make it 50 meters for now press uh, calculate and it will give me my uh, information down near the bottom or I can click on radical and it will exactly show me all my old over points on my reticle right here on the top you have a little turret that you can move and you can see it has an impact like you will use your your turrets on on your scope so uh, I did test this it works perfectly and um, I hope that uh, this helps you guys as well some other stuff that I quickly just want to run through here um, is that you have some information and that you can uh, print you can export it as an excel file and print it if you really want to uh, this is not really a um, a review video on Sterlock Pro it's just some stuff that I've been using over the past uh, couple of years and um, it really helped me out in the field so I'm just sharing this information with you so I'm gonna close this and basically there you go you can fill in your wind uh, if you have uh, a good wind reading with a good proper wind meter 
Um, the app supports the Weatherflow wind meter, the one that uh, works via Bluetooth. So you don't need to plug it into the headphone jack the whole time. You can use the, the Bluetooth uh, function and it will give you a good reading on live reading every time you pick it up you must just look at your wind degrees as well so according to um, say for instance I'm shooting directly towards the camera um, and the wind is coming right from the front um, I can just you know place the the wind angle on this little um, compass here and select OK and then you can just add your wind speed in here let's make it 20 kilometers per hour it's a hectic day of wind calculate and then it will give you it on your reticle as well if you wish to do so so basically that is how I do it and um, as you guys have seen in the past it um, really worked very well for me like I said um, you have seen in my past videos with the Daystate uh, Wolverine how accurate all my stuff was in the past and even till today using the Red Wolf Safari um, I think the furthest shot that I took so far with this um, setup now was at 138 meters and I also used my um, Stirlock Pro on my phone to calculate the distance so uh, it just shows you if you are super accurate with all your measurements you can get great results out of this app so guys if you like this video um, please give it a thumbs up also share it with somebody that might find this um, information helpful and interesting um, also remember to uh, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button if you want um, to see more videos like this and uh, thank you guys for your support I really do appreciate it in this times um, I wish I can go out and uh, do more hunting videos but unfortunately our lockdown and our restrictions basically um, is restricting us <laughs> um, to go out and uh, enjoy the outdoors as well so um, yeah if you guys have any 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 questions please uh, leave me something down in the comments below I will try to come back to each and every one of you and help you as far as possible um, again thank you very much I appreciate you guys watching links to all the stuff I've been using is down in the description of the video and I'll see you guys in the next one cheers